welcome to the WWE Podcast. Thank you, everybody, for joining me here on this Sunday, December 5th, 2021. And yes, we're doing a dual show today because this is the news brief. But also later today, we're going to be doing the Week in Review, our flagship show that's coming to you later this evening, probably in five or six hours. Uh, but hope everyone's doing well. And Amanda Jen will be back later this week with your news brief and uh, looking forward to her return as things just for all of us. <laughs> During this time of year, just crazy, right? Insane. Work, family, everything else. So uh, I really appreciate her and all of the efforts that she has uh, put into this show. And she will be returning. I know a lot of you guys really enjoy her shows, and she will be back uh, later this week. So there are there is some news, and I do want to uh, just continue this, this uh, news brief theme because I think it's important for you guys to know what's going on if you don't regularly read the websites or Twitter or keep up with the news. I think this is a convenient way for you to do that. And let's jump into it. As the title of this show says, I've got a few topics and we're going to cover them right now. So as you may or may not have heard, Bray Wyatt, his Twitter, his Twitter account appears to have been hacked. And this is according to Sports Kita, although you can go check it out on many other credible websites. Here's what Sports Kita says. Former WWE superstar Bray Wyatt his official Twitter handle has been seemingly hijacked, judging by his last tweet. Wyatt was a big name in WWE when he was a mainstay on the weekly shows, and he, obviously he was released, as they said. Uh, but the former WWE champion has been keeping his fans updated via Twitter since his release. And Bray's fans' latest tweet left fans concerned. Uh, it looks like Wyatt's Twitter handle has been hacked, and the following message was posted via his Twitter, Twitter account just a short while ago. And this is the actual tweet that was on his account that leads people to believe it was hacked. It says, good morning, Twitter family. Today will be the only day my messages will ever be turned on. So if you guys wanted a, a PlayStation 5 for retail price, uh, now's the chance. Send me a direct message now. Um, <laughs> so, uh, And there's a picture. Uh, per this apparently hacked tweet, uh, Twitter account, of the actual PlayStation 5 box, right? Like, it looks like somebody's selling this on eBay. Like, that look, looks like the photos that you would put on an eBay uh, selling listing. And so this, there's no doubt about it that this looks like it's completely hacked. I mean, why the hell would Bray Wyatt be selling a PlayStation 5? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So... Here is, uh, let's see, I'm trying to see if there's anybody else or anything else that's in this article that um, seemingly has more news than just that. I mean, there's a lot of uh, lot of responses to this that people know it looks like he was hacked. A large number of Twitter users have been hacked lately, according to Sportskeeda, with their accounts posting tweets urging their followers to message them to buy a PlayStation 5. People want to buy a PS5. They're having a hard time doing it due to restocking issues, and hackers are taking advantage of of that. Um, and actually former st uh, superstar Carl Anderson of the good brothers, his account was hacked. And here's what he said. He said, I got hacked. Sorry, I'm not selling a PS five. Watch the TNS vlog on their YouTube channel. Listen to their podcast on all podcast platforms. Also made a lot of money at indie at an indie show last night. The independent wrestling world is alive and well, let's keep it that way. Um, so, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> this is clearly a he is a clearly a um, a victim of somebody hacking his account, and this will probably be deleted very quickly, if not already, if you haven't already checked out his his account. But man, the PS5 shortage continues. There's no nobody safe from the PS5 shortage. And I got to say, on a side note, I mean, I you know I'm not in the market for a PS5, but how is the PS5 still not available worldwide? I know there's COVID. I understand that COVID can be blamed on everything. It's the king of gaps. Anything that's a problem in the world, shortages or anything else can just be blamed on COVID. But the PS5 has been over out for over a year now, and it's still impossible to find. How is that possible? <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I mean, it just it, it's incredible. If you're a PS5 um, or a PlayStation video game connoisseur, this must be super frustrating. I got to say, if I was still in the market and I didn't have a family, I would be all you know, into this. But um, anyway, let's move on to the next story that I have on my list here. And it's the original storyline that was proposed for Brock Lesnar's return. 
And I actually reported this many weeks ago, so this shouldn't be really anything too crazy that you haven't heard before. But originally, the plan was, after Brock got suspended, that he was going to return by buying, quote-unquote, buying a ticket to the L.A. Um, episode of Friday Night SmackDown, which is actually next week. That was the original proposed plan. And this is according to the Wrestling Observer. So whether you believe it or not that that's a credible source, they have been around for a long time. And I actually reported on this many, many weeks ago as well. So whether you deem me a credible source or not is also up for debate. But that was the original plan for Brock Lesnar. He was going to return via just being in the crowd. And then uh, that actually changed somewhere along the way where Brock, as we know, was suspend- his suspension was lifted. And you know, I, I just I don't know why they changed the plans, I got to say. I mean, I, I, I don't know why they decided to, uh, to, to move things up. What I'd also like, though, is an actual explanation as to why his suspension was lifted. That would be a good thing. I mean, if, if we don't get a reason why his suspension was lifted, like how can it not be explained? Or am I giving WWE too much credit that they're actually going to give us an explanation? I have my doubts that WWE is going to give us what we're searching for in an explanation. I know I, know I am. Brock was about to. Brock was about to explain why his suspension was lifted before he was interrupted by Sami Zayn this past week on SmackDown. I'll get more into that in much more detail on the Week in Review tonight. Um, But keeping it from a news perspective, I can only decipher that the reason they moved it up is they didn't know what else to do with Roman this week. Or they wanted to bump ratings and pay Brock another few hundred thousand just to appear on one show. You know, I I do wonder how much Brock is making per show. It's got to be an exorbitant amount. I mean, Brock makes more in one show than most people make in a year, I would really venture to guess. And... I mean, I'm not hate, hating on him for it. Good for him. But, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't know the reason for bumping it up other than trying to push ratings. Let's not wait. You know, let's uh, let's get things going now. We don't know what to do with Roman this week. And they got rid of the whole ticket buying story that he was going to appear in like the front row or whatever it was going to be. And um, I also don't understand why Brock didn't attack Roman Reigns at all. <laughs> like what? Why? He let Roman Reigns just exist on SmackDown, and yet he was bullying Sami Zayn around. Why? <laughs> I mean, he's a babyface. And again, all right, I'm getting a little bit more into the Weekend Review content and why I really didn't like Brock Lesnar's character this week at all. I know many of you did. I even questioned this on TikTok. By the way, we're growing quickly on TikTok. About 1,600 followers in just over a week and a half of really starting from nothing. So if you want to join us on TikTok and see those latest updates, you can join us there at, uh, at the WWE podcast. And, uh, I, I really questioned like, he's a baby face. Why, why is he acting like this bullying Sami Zayn? And he didn't attack Roman and he just let, you know, uh, he, he beat up Sami Zayn to help Roman Reigns retain the championship. I, it makes no sense. This week on SmackDown was very confusing. Uh, and, and to me, one of the less, I, I got to say less uh, exciting returns that Brock has had in recent memory. So that is uh, the second news story. And the uh, third news story that I have here is about Elias. So those of you that have wondered, as I have myself, where the hell is Elias? You know, the last time we saw him, the last match he had was on July 19th in the Symphony of Destruction match against Jackson Riker. Jackson Riker, as we all know, has been since Future Endeavored. And we now have a missing Elias who is somewhere lost in the woods. Maybe he's part of the Blair Witch Project. I don't know. I mean, like, where where is he? We don't know. Um, But there has been a report coming out that WWE did not know where to go with the character. They just know they wanted to kill the previous version of him without actually having a plan for what his new character would look like. They just knew, maybe Elias knew, that he wanted to just get rid of who he was and re-identify himself, rebrand himself as something new. And again, that's a that's poor planning. I mean, I was not a big fan of the Elias character to begin with. I, I thought he was thought he was okay in the ring. <clears throat> His gimmick was more than played out, so I agree it was time for a character change. But if you don't know what you're going to do and you just kill off your previous self without having a a, <clears throat> a pre-planned uh, substitution, wh- 
Well, then that's worse than just continuing a, char- a character that is past its shelf life. So here's what, uh, again, according to Sportskeeda, I like to keep my sources consistent. And Sportskeeda is a very, I think, reputable website, as is Wrestling Inc., uh, The Torch, WrestleProWrestling.net. So plug to all those guys. And we all know who they are. And, um, you know, they have great podcasts as well. So <clears throat> here's what Sportskeeda said. Elias hasn't been seen on TV for almost four months after he memorably declared or <clears throat> that, uh, quote unquote, Elias is dead. The former 24-7 champion, I, I guess that's, <laughs> I don't know why you'd use that as an identifier for uh, Elias that doesn't help his case. Like declaring yourself as 24-7 champion actually I think is something you want to keep to yourself. It's not something you put on your resume, but nonetheless, this is how sports kid identified Elias. He was seemingly kick starting a new gimmick by ending the drifter, but a new report from WrestleVotes notes that the company didn't actually have a quote-unquote end plan for these uh, vignettes. Yeah, no, that, and that's what I had just said before, uh, that they really had no idea. They just knew they wanted to kill him, and they didn't know have a plan for moving forward. That is such a microcosm of WWE booking in a nutshell. Like, they just do things without actually knowing where they're going. You want a couple of examples? First and foremost, we have, of course... Retribution. We have uh, heel turns that oftentimes don't make sense. They just turn people heel without a plan. They do uh, raw underground that just kind of up and went and died. You know, um, they they do things and then there's no follow up. There's no seemingly long term plan. They just do things and go. Well, we'll figure it out on the back end, pal. No, <laughs> you need to know where you're going. Otherwise, you could destroy a character without any for any reason. I mean, for for no reason rather. So let's continue here. Uh, according to Sports Kita, the report goes on, and the report that Sports Kita is referencing, of course, is from WrestleVotes. So, giving credit where credit's due. Uh, the, so, the report goes on to reveal that Elias's rebranded look was too similar to Randy Savage. So, the chairman wasn't a fan. Elias's drifter persona didn't allow him to be very colorful. So, this new look would have been a distinct character change for him. With the report about this Nick's gimmick, it seems the company is no closer to repackaging Elias, who has been absent from WWE TV since the summer. Um, and we have a link here to, of course, the uh, the infamous fire that Elias has. Uh, he's being shown in the middle of the woods. He created like some kind of campfire, and he's throwing his guitar into it. And we see a tombstone that says, you know, Elias 2017 to 2021. So uh, let's continue on here. Elias came through the ranks in NXT, where he wrestled for several years before making his debut on the main roster in 2017. And uh, they kind of give him a little bit of a background. Almost five years on the main roster, WWE decided it was time for the guitar strumming star to debut a new gimmick. And then they said, again, the Elias is dead vignette started. After two of these videos aired on Monday Night Raw, the company hasn't mentioned him on TV since. WWE did a follow-up on these vignettes, so while the character is dead, it's unclear what Elias' future holds. Uh, Again, this is such gross mismanagement. Elias wasn't a massive star, but in many people's eyes, he was was untapped potential where he was very limited by this over, kind of overused, played-out gimmick, and it was. I agree. It was time for something new. I have no problem with them doing this. I think it was time, more than time, overdue. But you don't kill a character if you don't know where you're going with it. It it just, to me, makes no sense. But it's, again, such, it's so telling of how they manage a lot of stories and and talent. They do things, and they have no follow-up. So let me know what you guys think about that. Do you think Elias will return? Do you think we, we could unfortunately see one of those future endeavored type of uh, type of reports come out? I hope not, because I do believe Elias does have some value and I hope they find something that he's repackaged as because as I just reported, as Sportskeeda reported, he was they did try something and Vince didn't like the way he was rebranded. Again, this wasn't on TV. But he did something that looked too much like, uh, what was it, the Macho Man? Was that what they said? I think that's what they said. Looked too much like uh, Randy Savage. So that is, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't want something to look like a knockoff of something else. So if indeed that was the case, of course, you, you want Elias to have his own identity. Uh, and 
I, I think there is something there. Maybe you just have him come back as just whoever he thinks he is, right? And the, the gimmick will find itself because oftentimes these manufactured gimmicks are not in line with who that person is and it comes across as manufactured and it doesn't connect with the audience. So I think Elias right now would benefit from finding out who he is, do some soul searching. I think Elias does need to do that before he is future endeavored. And, and unfortunately, if I was to say if there's another round of, of cuts, Elias likely would be on that list given he's been off TV for four months and they have really no shame in cutting people who they feel they've gotten everything out of. So I'm not saying he's going to get cut. I haven't heard any reports of that, so I don't want that spreading around. I'm not saying that. I am just concerned that if there is another round coming, he could easily bound that list. I don't think anybody would be shocked. So thank you, everybody, for listening. I know these are brief. They're supposed to be brief, as the wrestling news brief name says. So thanks, as always, for listening. You can catch us on uh, the Weekend Review later tonight. It'll probably be the next show in this feed. It should be. And definitely take a listen to that. We are going to be uh, covering a lot tonight on the Weekend Review into detail, a lot on Brock Lesnar. I'm probably going to open the show with Brock Lesnar and his babyface character that was shown this week that not all bad, but hmm. I've got some things I want to I want to get off my chest on that. So, again, please give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts if you have a moment, and consider following us on TikTok at the WWE Podcast as our audience grows there. And I actually can go live now. I've hit the uh, the threshold for being able to go live. I met the minimum number of follower requirements and things. So maybe I'll start going live and taking questions and just having a general wrestling discussion on TikTok if you're interested in that. So everybody, thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.